Jesus. Can we lift him up right now? Give him the fruit of your lips. Tell him how good he is, how awesome he is, how wonderful he is, how beautiful he is. He's our redeemer, our savior. He's our everything. And without him, we are nothing. Without him, we can't do nothing. But it's in, it is in him that we live and move and have the fiber of our being. We cannot breathe without him. We cannot walk without him. We will not have the activities of our limbs without him. So we lift up the name of Jesus. The King of glory. For the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And he is worthy of our praise. He is due our praise. So lift him up right now. Oh, God, strengthen 
lift your hands in praise. Lift your hands because he's a great God. He's a mighty God. So lift your hands and wash. Hallelujah. Great God, we lift our hands in worship. We reverence you as a mighty God. We lift our hands in worship to the master, to our king, to our Lord. We lift our hands and worship you. Yes, Lord, we do. Our healer, our provider. We lift our hands and worship. Yay! Yay!
might or by power, but it's by your spirit, God. Not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit, God. Not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit, God. Not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit, God. Not by might, not by might.
always win. Nothing can stand against us. We Oh, my God. 
shout. No, we came to kill a devil. We came to comfort that thing that's been chasing you down. We came to show the devil you ran up on the right one this time. I'm ready for battle. I'm ready. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let me hear them. Let me hear them. Come on. Amasi. Don't make me a prophetess have to do all the work. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I know it was faces on the flyer. But the face you didn't see was Jesus. He, he the one finna work in the room. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't wait, don't wait on your prophetic word. Don't wait on the laying on of hands. Don't even wait for the preach word to go. Come on, get what you need right now. Come on, come on, this the pregame. Come on, this the pregame. Y'all know how we used to do when we was in the world. I know I was turning up before I went to the party, okay? I was turning up before I went to the party. I was throwing shots back and I was getting ready before the party started. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for every real person in the room. Thank you, thank you. But when Jesus changed my life, the pregame was, Jesus, I came. And if ain't nobody else taking a lap, I take a lap. And if ain't nobody else jumping, I start jumping. We give honor to the presence of God that's in this room. Come on. I know, I know it's quite a few people in the room. But I just want you, and I'm going to move so we can get into it so God can just do what he want to do. Because I want you to find somewhere comfortable for you to be able to stand and jump. Now hear me, I know this is unconventional, okay? But if you gotta come and stand on the altar the whole night, do what you got to do. I don't want you to miss nothing, okay? I don't want you to be restricted because if you don't have enough elbow room, because we know DCC and TG, we would have ran about seven laps already. Come on here. Everybody else, yeah, I know y'all would have jumped in. I don't want you to be restricted because it's a lot of bodies in the room. Because God is about to wipe us out. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm not, I'm not just saying it. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. It's about to be a wipeout for some of y'all. Let me give you your second prophetic word tonight he's about to wipe you out from the things that you've been dealing with from the struggles you've been having he's about to wipe you out he's about to wipe you clean he's about to wipe you down he's about to wipe out the stress he's about to wipe out the depression he's about to wipe out the heartbreak he's about to wipe it out So we give God glory in this room. Before I jump in too deep, I want to honor my husband, Apostle Kenneth Cunningham. He's somewhere. Hallelujah. He's moving and shaking and orchestrating and narrating and doing all the things. Hallelujah. But we honor him. We also honor Apostle Jonathan Brown. Praise God for you, men of God. Let me tell you something. Me and prophetess would not be able to stand here if they didn't say yes. So we honor them. We honor them. Come on. I want you guys to stay in worship. We're moving right along. We're moving right along. Give me a scripture. I want to get, uh, give me Psalms 34, 17. I need all the prophetic words. I ain't going to take a text. I'm, I'm ready. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has been dealing with me over the last few weeks concerning sound. He's been dealing with me concerning our sound in particular. And what God said for us tonight, one of the things he said for us tonight was that he was about to recharge the sound of the believer. He was about to recharge your sound. Some of us, we've been muzzled. We've been on mute. The enemy been knocking our head back and forth. If it's not one thing, it's another. Every time we turn around, it's problem after problem. And what has happened is, it has knocked the sound out of us. But God says, I'm about to recharge your sound. But this time when you make a sound, it's going to be a power sound. Tell your neighbor, this, this is my topic going for power sound. Shout to him, power sound. This time when you open your mouth, he's about to add some more fire to it. He's about to add some more power to it. He's about to recharge you in a way that when you open your mouth, every mouth, every demon, every word that has risen up against you, it will be brought down under the power of the Holy Ghost. He's about to recharge you. Give me Psalm 34, 17. The scripture says, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. Don't you know that a cry is a sound? When you talk, it's a sound. When you pray, it's a sound. When you open your mouth, the scripture says, when the righteous cry, when you cry out, he will hear you. I want to let you know, I know some of you may have been feeling like you've been crying and you've been praying and the Lord has not heard you. But I want to encourage your spirit on tonight. He hears you. He hears you. This time when you cry, he's going to hear you. Can you encourage your neighbor and just tell him he's about to hear you? The prayers in the midnight hour, the unspoken request. He's listening. He's listening. His ear is attentive. His ear is attentive. He's leaning down. He's leaning down saying, I hear you, daughter. I hear you, son. I hear you. He's going to deliver you. And some of us, we stop crying, we stop shouting. We stop travailing. We stop praying. Our prayers have, have, have only been constricted and restricted to the car ride to work. Our prayers has only been restricted to when you get to church. And now it's time to pray and worship. But I came to let you know tonight, open your mouth wide. Because just because you thought he didn't hear you last season, I want to encourage you. He's about to hear you. The thing you've been asking for, he hears you. Oh, he hears it. He hears it. Can you just take a moment, lift your hands, and just open your mouth right there. Whatever you don't speak in English, your travail is still going to shoot it to heaven. Whatever you don't say out your mouth with natural words, your holler is going to shoot it, and he will hear you. Come on, take your moment, shout. Take your moment, shout. Shout. This holler for my daughter. This holler for my son. This holler for my grandmama. This holler is to get me out of this hell I've been in. That's what this holler's for. And I praise Jesus that he hears every holler in this room. So he hears you. He hears you. He hears you. It's some people in this room, you stop crying. You stop travailing because you felt like my holler in travail didn't get the job done. So we talking about power sounds. 
So you've been waiting till you come to church for your apostle to pray for you, for you to get it done, for, for, for the person to lay hands on you so that the thing will break. You've been waiting on prophetess to lay hands on you. You've been waiting on pastor lady. You've been waiting until you get to church. You've been calling your mama. You've been calling the other pastors on staff for them because you feel like my holler and my cry hasn't gotten the job done this far. So I might as well put it on mute because it's not going to get the job done further. But let me let you know something in the text. It said the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and he delivered them out of all of their troubles. Yo holler about to get the job done. Yo holler about to break the chain. I prophesy over you that he's adding fire to your holler. That you're not going to have to wait for pastor. You're not going to have to wait for prophet. You're not going to have to wait for PL. You going to open your mouth. He going to deliver and you going to have a testimony. Who am I talking to in this room? You going to holler and you going to get a testimony. You going to holler and you going to get a breakthrough. You going to holler and you going to see deliverance. Tell your neighbor my holler about to get the job done. My holler about to get the job done. Yeah. I've been talking, but I've been talking in my own strength. But I'm about to make a power sound. Come on here. Y'all know how people say they making power moves. Yeah, you about to make a power sound. You about to open your mouth and you shall decree a thing. And it shall be established. That's what happens when there's power on your sound. Give me 2 Kings 7 and 6 and I'm about to move out the way. Hallelujah. Listen, don't get quiet at no part of the service. I know we sometimes we get used to the one standing before us doing the preaching and we get to sit and receive. But just know as you're hollering, you're receiving. As you're travailing, you're receiving. You won't miss nothing tonight. You won't miss nothing tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Second Kings 7 and 6. Come on. Hallelujah. I got the scripture. 2 Kings 7 and 6 says, For the Lord had made the army of the Syrians hear the sound of chariots and of horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to come against us. What happened in the text was the Syrians had taken up camp against Israel and they were getting ready to charge against Israel. But the Lord sent a sound that confused the enemy. I said the Lord sent a sound that confused the enemy. Hold on, y'all sound good. Hold on, hold on. But the sound that he sent was a sound like it was three big armies put together. The Syrians said, it seems like, it sounds like there's one army and another army and another army and what I didn't what scripture I didn't add to it was when they heard the sound they went running when they heard the sound they went running the enemy to Israel went running after they heard a sound what am I trying to say to you I prophesy over you now that when you open your mouth in this season it's gonna not just sound like you it's gonna sound like an army got your back it's gonna sound like it's an army it's gonna sound like it's a legion yeah you couldn't get it done yes you couldn't get it done in your power you couldn't get it done in your strength but there is an army that's on your side can you open your mouth and shout in this room come on shout let your faith be recharged. That your sound got power. Your sound got power. Oh, yes, it does. Open your mouth and travail. Your enemy about to hear a sound. Yeah, that just ain't little Leah. That just ain't little 
Valencia that just ain't little pastor. Oh, it's somebody working with them. It's somebody working with them. It's somebody got that cat with them. So you got to holler in this season. You can't come to church and afford not to holler. You can't be at home and afford not to holler. The Lord told me on the way to church a few weeks ago. He says, I'm about to give the people of God an unusual amount of testimonies. And he wasn't just referring to, I was praying and the Lord gave me the job I was praying for. No, these testimonies are about to be unusual. The people you've been praying for for years, they are about to run into a visitation with the Lord. Sicknesses that we've been dealing with for years, it's about to try up. He says, I'm about to give you a testimony. So you ain't got time to be quiet. You don't have time to be waiting on something somebody else every chance you get you gotta open your mouth and you gotta sound the alarm you better tell that devil not today devil not this time devil yeah you got me last time silly devil i got some more power silly devil i got a fresh fire silly devil you gotta be quicker than that you gotta holler you got to travail. Let me talk to every person that's been too afraid to pray because you don't know what to pray. I don't have the fancy prayer language. I don't know the words to say. When you can't say a word, open your mouth and travail. The Bible says the spirit makes intercession by moanings and groanings woo, that cannot be uttered. Oh, hallelujah to God. When I don't know what to say, when I feel like this situation is too much for me to put into words, oh, I just start hollering because let me let you know how good my God is. He interprets my holler. He interprets my tears. He interprets my travail. He interprets what I can't put into English and what I can't work up to say in the spirit. My travail is going to get it done. You got to holler. I prophesy over you that when you shout this time, it's going to get the job done. You're not going to have to clap back. You're not going to have to fight back. You're not going to have to defend yourself. The moment they start acting a fool, you just start travailing. They may not know what's going on. They might call you crazy. They might say it don't take all of that. But I will let you know, out of all the hell I've been through, it takes this and some more. Don't you stop hollering because they don't understand. You tell your neighbor that ain't hollering. Move over, move over. Shout right over their head. Shout right over they Hallelujah. I gotta holler. Don't you lose battles in this season because you won't use one of the weapons God gave you to use. I want to let you know that your mouth is a weapon in this season. Your mouth. Now the Bible tells us that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. So we have the ability within our tongue. We have the power within our tongue to say a thing and it can either give life or it can either bring death. And I want to let you know if your tongue got that much power why you still losing battles why you still wrestling with things you've been wrestling with for years open up your mouth in this season and defeat the enemy with your travail defeat them in your prayer closet defeat them steward your sound steward your sound steward your sound steward your sound how do you do that you use it and you use it for the right things you don't you don't have time to be arguing and fighting with folks in this season you are wasting your sound you are giving your sound over to the devil 
Okay, come on here. You giving, you giving your sound, your power, your weapon. You are putting down your weapon and you are allowing the enemy to over. I'm not fighting with you. I'm not wrestling with you and I'm not fighting with you. But I'm going to use my weapon before I lose my weapon. Y'all don't hear me in this room. Some of you been on mute and you been muzzled because you ain't been using it. How do you steward your sound? You use it. You pray. You prophesy. You use it. You don't wait till Sunday to use it. You use it on Monday. You use it when you're walking in your job. I command every devil in this job to bow to the power of God. You use it when you disciplining your kids and you pray over them. I command you, Lil Ray Ray. You better line up by the power of God. You use it. You steward your sound by using it. Your sound gets stronger the more you use it. The more you submit your sound to God, the stronger it gets. I gotta be, be praying. I can't, I can't take days off in this season. Because if my sound is going to maintain power, if I'm going to make power sounds, I got to get stronger. If you don't lift weights for 10 years and you go in the weight room trying to lift 100 pounds, epic fail, okay? It just, it's just not going to work. You're not strong enough to lift that much weight because you ain't been doing it. Your body ain't been conditioned for this. But when your sound has been conditioned in prayer, when you choose to pray instead of fight, when you choose to pray instead of clap back, you're building up the strength of your sound so you can stop praying for a new job and you can pray for a whole corporation to be yours. Y'all don't want to talk. You can stop praying for the little things. Give me a little bit of money and you will start saying, Father, help me steward what I got so I can be the millionaire, so I can have what you want me to have. Your prayers strengthens your sound. And the stronger it gets, the heavier the weight you can lift with it. So right now, you only may be able to use your sound to, to pray for your auntie and she come to church. But as you condition your sound and steward your sound, you'll be able to pray for your whole family. And then what happens when during family reunion, the whole family walk into church and give their life to Jesus. You just lifted a heavier weight because you got stronger. Your sound, how you gonna have power with your sound if you don't strengthen it? How you gonna make power sound if you don't strengthen it? Lift your hands. Let's move a little further. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will give these folks a fresh fire. I pray that you will give them a fresh touch. I pray in the name of Jesus, you recharge their sound. You recharge their faith. May they make a power sound. May they travail and demons bow. May they travail and things begin to shift. In the name of Jesus, do it for these people. Give them a fresh touch. Let them make power sound. Come on, hold your sound. Hold your sound. Strengthen your sound. Strengthen your sound. Strengthen it. Strengthen it. Hold it. Some of you ain't hollered this long in six months. Strengthen your sound. Strengthen your core. So you can travel a little longer. Come on, come on, come on. Make a power sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all go ahead. You don't need me. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. This was my whole road. Come on, come on. Say, neighbor. This was the family I left back home. Neighbor. This for everybody on my job. Come on, this sound. In this season, it's not just for me. Come on. This sound is for my grandmama. This sound is for my papa. Come on. This sound for the four kids I left back home. The sound that I'm making this season. This sound is for everybody that's connected to my life. Oh, glory. 
Oh, glory. Come on, invite them on in. Come on. We're not here for a regularly scheduled program, but we're here for the move of God. Come on, let heaven hear your sound. Let heaven hear your sound. Let heaven hear your sound. We're going to Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get a little bit more volume in my mic? Thank you. Yes, Rabbi. Nehemiah 2. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You ready for round two? Now, if that neighbor didn't shout, I got a feeling that you sat beside the rope. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready for round two? All the hell we've been through this year, I need two words. I need two prophets. I need two breakthroughs. I need two miracles. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a double portion. If God want to give me double, I'm ready for double. I got a double praise. I got a double anointing. I got a double oil. Open up your mouth and give him a double praise. A double praise. A double praise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tanya Bekoraya. Somebody shout double. Somebody shout double. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18 tells us that also I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me. Yeah. Say the hand of God is good upon me. And also the king's words that he has spoken to me. I heard the Lord say I'm going to give you favor with kings. He said, the hand that's on your life, it's a good hand. But it's not just good to be upon your life. There must be evidence that you carry the oil of God. And so the Lord said, going into this next season, uh, after he gives you that new sound that you just got, he says, I'm going to give you favor with kings. I got to give you favor with bankers. I got to give you favor with CEOs. I got to give you favor with the bishop. I got to give you favor in the airlines. I got to give you favor on your job. The Lord says, I'm about to give you favor with kings. He said, and they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. I want you to prophesy to the person beside you and I want you to tell them what the prophetic unctioning is for tonight. I want you to look them in their eyes and if you're not too bougie, grab them by the hand so that they know it's real. And I want you to look them real good in the eyes and say, neighbor, mind your business. If they got offended, tell them one more time. Look them square in their eyes and say, neighbor, Mind your business. There's work for you to do. There's more that God has for you. You've been sleeping on your calling. You've been sleeping on your anointing. You've been sleeping on your business. But I heard the Lord say, He's raising up a people that's about to mind their business. I gotta mind my business in this season. I can't help you with your kids because I got my own kids. I can't help you with your business because I got my own business. Here comes the season 
arena where you stop trying to be to people what they won't be to you. You blaming God for where you lack and it's not God's fault that you lack. It's that you wasted your resources. You waste your intercession. You waste your advice. You waste your anointing on people that don't want to receive. But I heard the Lord said many of these people are not your assignment and in this season you gonna mind your business. I'm stressed because I don't mind my business. I, I, I got anxiety because I don't mind my business. I, I'm struggling in life right now because I'm trying to help people and I need help myself. I, I, I'm trying to go to therapy and I'm trying to counsel people and I need help myself. The Lord said he going to teach you how to mind your business. The definition of minding your business, it inter that you should not interfere with what does not affect you if, if it don't affect you if it doesn't concern you then I, I can't interfere with it could it be that you hadn't finished building what you were supposed to build because you keep interfering into matters that don't concern you could it be that our churches would be better if the sheep would get out of the shepherd's business could it be that your son's marriage could be y'all know i'm a prophet don't play with me could it be that your son's marriage could be better if you as a mother-in-law was sticking your nose in their business the lord telling us in this season that you can't interfere in what does not affect you He said, he said, I'm rebuilding the people of God in this season from self-inflicted wounds. I'm rebuilding you from self-inflicted infections. I'm rebuilding you from things not that the enemy attacked you with, but the very things that you were unwilling to let go of. He told me to tell you that he sympathizes, that many of you for the last nine months, it's been tough, particularly in your finances. It has been tough, not just in your money but he said it's been tough in your mind but I came to encourage you tonight that you are about to do the good work as God works on you you gonna be able to build and finish what you started if you look up the Greek and Hebrew meaning of the word business because I'm in the Bible there are many different definitions the one of them is advice one of them is an area and one of them is iniquity and I want to help some of you tonight because I want to make sure that you go home with this substance in your belly God has assigned you to an area in this life there are certain things that nobody else can do but you there are certain regions uh, that you've been assigned to and it doesn't matter how much you kick uh, and scream against the will of God uh, you can go to that region whether you want to or not uh, some of you struggle with the children he gave you but according to the word of God uh, your business is your area I don't care where you want to work in the church uh, your area is your area and you always can be afflicted until you receive your area can I talk to some of you the reason why you're frustrated is because you want God to change his mind about your assignment one of the things I know about God is that God will call you to be the deliverer of what you've been delivered from and I see a whole lot of shouters but you also shame you don't want God to have you as a preacher of same-sex attraction because that means you got to let go of your shame and be the deliverer of what you've been delivered from from. See, you want God to change your assignment. You want God to change your message because you still shame about what you used to be in. Why well, I'm not getting there? Why everybody else moving? Why everybody else walking in they calling? Why everybody moving up the ladder? How are they prophesying and preaching? It's because 
because you still quiet about the very thing that God gave you victory over and the Lord told me to tell you whether it was rejection whether it was lust whether it was perversion whether it was greed whether it was gluttony the Lord God told me to tell you that in this next season your message is your mess whatever I brought you out of that's what I'm about to burn you about I hear the Lord saying lift up your hands I prophesy that you're going to receive and accept your assignment You running from it because it doesn't give you the aesthetics. I'm so tired of aesthetic anointing. Everything got to look perfect. Everybody got to sound a certain way. Some of y'all don't even listen to preachers unless they got the sound that you want. But the problem with the body right now is that you overlooking some people that may not be wrapped the way you want them to be wrapped, but they got that oil and you need that oil. So I don't care what you got on. I don't care what your are nomination is I don't care where you came from I don't care what your gender is all I know is the Lord says that you are a gift and I need what's on the inside of you change my mind God I don't want to talk about abortions I don't want nobody to know that I speak in tongues but I had two abortions change my assignment God I don't want them that I used to do drugs give me something else to minister about and the Lord told me to tell you no mind your business tap your neighbor on the shoulder they getting a little weary and say neighbor wake up it's time for you to be or say neighbor you gotta mind your business neighbor you've been in everybody else business you've been criticizing everybody else calling for what you gonna do with the all that's on you I hear the Lord saying mind your business He gave you an area and you got to stay in your area. Not only that, the Lord says when you mind your business, you also deal with iniquity. This is one of the meanings of the word business. It also means iniquity. It's going to make sense in a minute because there is something taunting the believers. It's, 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 it's spiritual and many of you are going to need what PL just preached about to deal with this business. Iniquity is the sin that is passed down through the bloodline. And I'm talking to some people. I know what I'm looking at in this room. You hear it all the time. You call yourselves generational curse breakers, but you live it under generational curses. Don't make no sense. You call yourself bloodline breakers, but you still dealing with that bloodline depression. Don't make no sense. You call yourselves deliverers, but you still live in poverty. Don't make no sense. Because the Bible says that when you mind your business, you also mind the iniquity that's in your bloodline so the Bible talks about an iniquity breaker by the name of David we like to read David and Goliath and we like to talk about it from the standpoint of him picking up his stones and throwing them at a giant but you know what that giant was it was a bloodline demon that had fought up against the army of Israel for years and generations and generations what David dealt with was a bloodline curse the Philistines were an enemy to Israel all of their lives so David decided that although he didn't have the charisma, although he didn't have the expertise, although he hadn't been fighting in the army, he decided, well, since ain't nobody else going to do it, I know the God of Israel. I may not know all that fancy praying that y'all do. I may not know all those big words. I may not be able to pull out a dictionary and I may just be a little kiddo, but David decided that I'm not going to let this giant get to my babies I'm not gonna let Goliath get to my children and so when Goliath came up against David he had to stop what had been going on for years 
You know what's happened? You, you ain't putting a stop to nothing. You, you, I, I, I want, I'm not here to beat you up, but I gotta be, I gotta be real with you. You letting too much slide. You, you ain't fed up enough. I know that ain't true. That used to be in the streets, game banging, letting stuff slide in your spiritual life. I know that ain't true. That used to get suspended if somebody looked at you, letting the devil slide on you like that. I know that ain't true. That used to hang on the corner and swing dollar bags. I need somebody to open up their mouth. And make a declaration in this season. I ain't let nothing, nothing slide. I ain't let nothing slide. The devil said, What? I ain't let nothing slide. What proclamations you make it? I ain't let nothing slide. I've been letting too much slide. I tell your neighbor, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've been sleeping on myself. I've been letting too much get by me. I've been letting people play in my face. I've been letting the devil make a fool out of me. I've been letting the Negro call me and I know he been with somebody else. But in this season, I ain't letting nothing slide. Look at somebody and say nothing. Look at somebody and say nothing. Look at somebody and say nothing. In this season, ain't nothing getting by me. You too anointed to play crazy. You know too much word to act dumb. You know too much Bible to sit out on Sunday when you know you're supposed to be in church. You too powerful to walk like you've been walking. But the Lord said you got to get fed up. You got to know how to get tired. You got to know how to quit getting whooped and tossed around to and fro. You got to know how to quit letting the devil turn you every which way but loose. But you ought to make up in your mind tonight. I don't care come hell or high water. Ain't nothing getting by me. Let me calm down. Played in our face too long. Made us church too long. But I hear an army rising as the woman of God has already said. I see sounds being renewed. I see your brand going to another level. I see your finances going higher. Because in this next hour, I got my head on straight. I'm thinking right. I'm in not in my feelings. And I'm believing God that whatever comes up against me, it's gonna have to see my stones. It's gonna have to see my slingshot. It's gonna have to see my prayer life. I know people don't like to talk to the devil, but just talk to him. Say, stop playing with me. Please stop playing with me. Please find you somebody else to play with. Please find you somebody else to mess with. Not my brother. Not my sister. Not my mama. Not my region. Not my church. Not my community. Not my money. Not my mind. Find you somebody else. You gonna let him rob you? You gonna let him rob you of the next 40 years? You gonna let him rob you of the next 10 years? You gonna let him rob you of the next two and a half months? I'm minding my business. As you rebuild your life, as you rebuild, the Lord says, when Nehemiah built this wall, he finished in 52 days. This is record breaking. This is the power of acceleration. And because we wasted so much time, you need acceleration in this season. You ain't got two years to get it together. You ain't got three years to date and play around when you trying to get married and you almost 40. Listen, the Lord says, I'm going to give you an anointing that there's going to be things that you complete in 52 days, 62 days. Do you believe God that he can heal you after six weeks of therapy? Two Sundays of rolling on the floor, three Bible classes, huh? and some communion. I believe he can do it.
I can't let you go home the same. He said, they built the wall in 52 days. This is the power of acceleration because this is what you're going to need to make up for the time. Waste it. But he also says that every time you start to get building and moving and moving in the right direction, who am I talking to? You run into shortages. You, you lose strength. You lose momentum. I know I'm in the house. You, you somebody discourages you with the story about how it didn't work for them I feel the Holy Ghost I believe that the Lord God told me to tell you he told me to curse the spirit of shortages that's over our people I don't know what you've been running out of I don't know what you've been lacking I don't know what has come up short but the Lord told me to curse the spirit of shortages over your life come on wife You ain't gonna run out of money. You ain't gonna run out of oil. You ain't gonna run out of strength. You ain't gonna run out of power. You ain't gonna run out of dominion. You ain't gonna run out of formula. You ain't gonna run out of gas. You ain't gonna run out of prestige. You ain't gonna run out of strength. I declare in Jesus' name, every shortage that has been pronounced over your life, I curse it under the blood of Jesus. And I declare that the people of God will go free and you will have more than enough to complete the assignment. You ain't gonna run out of confidence. You ain't gonna run out of security. You ain't gonna run out of safety. You ain't gonna run out of mind regulation. You ain't gonna run out in this season. You ain't gonna run out of wisdom. You ain't gonna run out of creativity. You ain't gonna run out of power. You ain't gonna run out of influence. You ain't gonna run out. I see some borrowers turning into lenders in this house. I see some powers uh, turning into lenders in this house. Uh, I see some people that all you knew how to do was beg. Uh, turning into the one that helps the beggars. Uh, you better open up your mouth uh, and you better know when you in the place of a prophet. Uh, that if God said it, we gon' see it. One of the things that happen in sports and I'm wrapping up is that when there was an interference into the game, the game has to stop. If something comes on the court while a game is going on, it has to stop. The flow of the game, the motion of the game, the momentum of the game has to stop so that whatever has interfered with the game can be moved out the way. The problem with this is, is that when you have momentum in the spirit, when you have momentum in a game, if something comes to stop the momentum, then there is likely that the game can be turned over to the team that was losing. If they get the momentum, then and although you were willing they can come back this is what's happening in our churches because we let Jezebels interfere with spiritual games and we don't want to correct them I'm not talking about the pastors because if you sit beside a Jezebel that comes into the house of God and talks against the vision and you don't say nothing they interfere with your momentum they interfere with your miracle they interfere with your breakthrough and I don't want to be your friend we ain't got to hang out but what you are not gonna do is interfere Fear with my miracle. I heard the Lord say what I said yesterday. He said, treat your heart the same way. I see Jezebels. I love it. Get mad or get delivered. Whichever one you want to do. Ain't going to stare me down. you to do to your soul what you do with your cell phone he said I need you to take that soul and I need you to do the very thing you do with that cell phone when you don't want to be bothered 
and you don't want the wrong people to have access to you uh, and you tired of putting up with foolishness uh, and you need a little time to yourself uh, you go and you press that moon icon uh, and you press it real hard and real good uh, and it puts your phone on do not disturb uh, he said I need you to do your emotions uh, I need you to do your heart uh, I need you to do your mind uh, like you do that cell phone put it on do not disturb uh, my soul uh, is on do not disturb uh, I'm not addressing nothing uh, I'm not doubling back uh, I'm not arguing no, with nobody I'm not explaining myself uh, in this hour uh, I'm on do not disturb uh, you can't make me mad uh, I'm not fighting with you uh, I'm not begging you to stay uh, I'm not begging you to live right uh, I'm not trying to hang with you all I know is I'm on do not disturb can't make me mad I'm on do not disturb can't get me out of character I'm on do not disturb ain't interfering with my growth I'm on do not disturb ain't tearing down my ministry I'm on do not disturb lie like you want spread the rumors like you want make up whatever you want to make up but in this hour And for some of you, he said, you got to block them in the spirit. You got to get a new number in the spirit. There's too many spirits got access to you. They know how to call you up and tell you to masturbate. But the next time masturbation call you, it's going to say this number that you reached is no longer in service. The next time perversion call you, it's going to say the number you reached is no longer the next time fear call you uh, it's gonna say the number you reached is no longer in service somebody shout no longer no longer no longer no longer Stereotyping yourself. The Lord says, stop stereotyping yourself. Gideon, when God called him, he gave God a stereotypical answer. He said, I am the least of my family. I am the least of my tribe. And some of you, the reason you're not growing, because you're looking at me and PL, you could do it too. But you living under your stereotypes. You, you're living on the what you've always done. And so you want to fight with people for stereotyping you. You want to fight with people for seeing your past. But can I open your eyes tonight? I don't think that it's people. I think it's you that still see you uh, the same way that you used to be. Because if you didn't, you'll get up and do what God said. If you didn't, you'll cry aloud and swear not. If you didn't, you ain't waiting on nobody to honor you. If you didn't, you're not waiting on them to receive you. If you didn't, see yourself in the stereotypical manner that you do you will be moving by now so as Nehemiah kept building this wall he the Bible says that Nehemiah actually had trouble from the outside and the inside and most of the time we can identify the outside enemy sent to keep you from progressing most of the time they're very obvious even the people closest to you can see them but what happens when you can't see the people that's closest to you let me, let me give you a spiritual life hack. Don't ever say what people won't do. 
let me give you a life hack because somebody didn't hear you. Y'all don't know when to praise God in this place. Don't you ever say uh, what they want to uh, and what they won't say uh, and who they won't hang with. Uh, because some of you, I see it in the room. Uh, I've seen best friends sleep with other people's boyfriend. Uh, and they friends still don't know. Uh, I've seen friends sleep with other friends' husbands. Y'all didn't come to have church. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen church members date each other man. Y'all didn't come to have church. Uh, I've seen pastors at the liquor store. Y'all didn't come to have church. I believe that the Lord is trying to wake you up from the enemies within. I believe the Lord is trying to deal with you about your circle. He's trying to deal with you about your connections. He's trying to deal with you about the people that you're supposed to let go of because they're only dead weight to your elevation. He's trying to deal with you about the people that's not doing what they said they would do, but you're unwilling to be set free. Bible says the Bible says that there were enemies that were within listen because we're going on out of here we're going into prophetic to, 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 to prophesy listen these enemies listen that when he got started building when he got started moving, when he got started growing, the Bible says he was halfway done. I feel the Holy Ghost. He was halfway done building the wall. Anybody else been halfway? You've been halfway in the middle of a breakthrough and you let the wrong person in your life. Anybody been halfway to your healing and it takes one trigger to pull you back out of the will of God. The Bible said halfway through the mission, they got into a situation where the in crowd got weary, where the in crowd started losing their faith and the people that started building with him, the People that started out with him, they no longer have the strength. They no longer have the momentum. They no longer have the power. They no longer have the wisdom to keep building with him. And I don't know who I'm preaching to. But the Lord said, you can't keep getting halfway. Come on. You can't keep getting halfway and letting the same people drag you out of the will of God. They ought to be used to you speaking in tongues by now. They ought to be used to you being in midnight prayer by now. You mean to tell me that you hanging out with people that's going to offer you food and make fun of you because you fasting? You mean to tell me that you hanging out with people that don't understand what you're building in this season? I told you I was saving money. I told you I was doing better. Why is it that you want me to spend more of my money? But I heard the Lord say, you about to clean up the inside. You got the outside, but you about to clean up the inside. You about to deal with the stragglers. You about to deal with the deadbeats. You about to deal with the hanging owners that don't want to contribute nothing. You ought to lift up your hands and say, everybody, that's a freeloader. I'm chopping you back up to your friends cause you gon' gossip about me and we supposed to be in covenant oh I feel the Holy Ghost I feel the Holy Ghost I feel the Holy Ghost you ought to tap your neighbor you ought to say neighbor they gotta go back home you ought to tap your neighbor and say neighbor they gotta go back to their mama you ought to tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, they got to go back to their old church. You ought to tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm minding my business. You ought to tap that neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm building something.
something and I can't come down. I'm building something and I can't come down. I'm building something and I can't come down. I can't come down to gossip. I can't come down to chit chat. I can't come down to fornicate. I can't come down to lust. I can't come down to smoke. I can't come down to party. I can't come down to talk. I'm building something and I can't come down. You ought to open up your mouth and make a declaration. I came down last year. I act a fool last year. But this time, when I get my momentum, I ain't coming down this year. I ain't coming down to address you peasants. I ain't coming down to throw no shade. Up. But once I get my momentum, I declare in Jesus' name, I'm building something. And I can't come down. Come on, cry aloud. I can't come down. 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 Make a declaration. I'm minding my business. I'm not acting funny. I'm not trying to be rude. I can't help the dancers because I'm on the praise and worship team. I'm minding my business. I can't help my mama and daddy solve their problems because I'm minding my business. I can't help my friend with her baby daddy because I'm minding. Y'all didn't come to have church. I'm minding my business. I'm not criticizing what another ministry is doing because I'm minding my own ministry. I don't care what another woman is doing, what another man is doing, because I'm minding my own business. I don't care what's going on in your marriage, because I'm minding my own marriage. I don't care what's going on with your sister, because I'm minding my own sister. It's the season for the body of Christ to mind your business. Lift your hands. Prophesy that every demonic distraction that has caused you to fall out of the will of God, to stop building every demonic distraction that has come up against your life, I declare in Jesus' name, under the blood of Jesus, I am free. I prophesy right now. Lift those hands. You got your sound from PL. I'm about to issue you your sword. I got my sound and I got my sword. And I'm about to get on the wall. And I can't come down to address no foolishness. I can't come down, release your sound to address no mess. Release your sound. I got my sound and I got my sword. I got my sound and I got my fight back. I got my sound and I got my hammer. I got my sound and I got breakthrough. Come on. I got my sound and I got my momentum. Get your momentum back. Get your momentum back. Get your momentum back. You ain't tired and sleepy. You ain't been able to get out the bed because you lost your spiritual momentum. It ain't what you eating. It's who you been letting drain you. It's who you been letting stress you. No longer will you try to defend yourself. No longer will you try to explain yourself. But you're getting your momentum back. I need you to get with a neighbor and this is serious I need you to let that neighbor dust your back off the Lord showed me prophetically that many of you have walked away from people demonic people demonic relationships demonic ministries but they put labels on your back and everybody's reading the label 
and addressing you as something that you've been delivered from. Everybody's reading the label. Come on. Come on. And he told me to tell you, fact, they ain't dusting it all hard enough. And once they get through dusting you off, you tell them, I got to get you next. Because whatever on your back got to come off tonight. Whatever demon been riding your back got to come off tonight. You better dust that back off in this atmosphere. Get it off of me. Come on. Get it off of me. Come on. Get it off. Whatever it is from my bloodline. Whatever it is from my bloodline. Whatever it is from my daddy. Whatever it is from my mama. Whatever it is from the relationship. Just my back off. Of. I don't want it on me any longer. It got to come off tonight. Old labels got to come off. Old mindsets got to come off. Old position has got to come off. Get it off my back. Get it off, Pierre. Get it off my back. Whatever they said is coming off tonight. Whatever label you put on yourself is coming off tonight. Get it off my back. 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 Every demonic umbilical cord has to be cut in this atmosphere. It has to go. That's it. That's it. Come on. If you need demonic umbilical cords cut tonight, just come lay on this altar. We came here for a move of God. Come on. Come on, we came here for a move tonight. These demonic umbilical cords, they're going to be cut. Whatever label's been on your back, come on. Find you a place in the aisle. You didn't come here to be bougie. 